Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show you how Elgamal encryption can be used to encrypt only one bit at a time. Suppose Alice wants to send a bit, it could be zero or one, right? And uh, Bob should be able to recover the message Alice send. We assume the channel is um, subject to eavesdropping, but not tampering, okay? That's the assumption we are going to make in this presentation. Suppose Alice wants to send a, a message uh, bit B equal to zero uh, to Bob. Bob should be able to recover uh, B equal to zero on, on his end. Okay, that's basically what the goal of this segment is. But of course, we don't want to send B equal to zero in clear text and the eavesdropper would know, okay, zero was sent by Alice. How do we encrypt one bit at a time? Okay, that's the interesting problem. So Bob being the recipient will publish his public key, right? Uh, the cyclic group G, the order of the group is Q and uh, the generator of the group is G and another public parameter H, which is nothing but um, how do you, how do we compute H? H is nothing but G power X. Okay, so X is randomly chosen uh, from uh, ZQ. X is the secret, of course, and uh, uh, H is computed as G power X. Okay, this is public, right? And this is private. X is private. X is private. Hidden to Bob. Okay, now how can Alice uh, perform this encryption? Her goal is to send one bit. It could be bit B equal to zero or bit B is one. How do we do that? So Alice is actually going to uh, generate a number Y randomly from ZQ, right? By picking an element from ZQ. What is she going to do next with it? She's going to do a couple of things. She's going to compute uh, G power Y, okay? And she's also going to compute C2, which is H power Y, okay? She's going to... In the case of B equal to zero, she's going to do this, okay? So in the case of B equal to one, she's going to use the same C1, okay? C1 will be G power Y. Um, C will be sending a C2 will be G power Z. Okay, so in any case, she's going to send this pair C1, C2, okay? So now, how will Bob recover that? Uh, the, the message bit Alice sent? Uh, all Bob is going to do is, uh, he's going to check whether the the pair that uh, he received from Alice satisfies this property that remember C1 is nothing but G power Y and C2 could be G power XY if B is zero, right? So the incoming pair is nothing but G power Y, G power um, XY. Since he knows um, X, he can check that because C2, remember, if you can expand this, is nothing but just G power XY. If this is true, meaning C2 is nothing but so he's going to check this. If C2 is equal to C1, I'm just using two equal x as a programmer, um, C1 power x, he knows x, right? So he can do this. If C2 is equal to C1 x, then he knows the message bit must be uh, b equal to zero, right? That's the assumption here, right? Because C2 is g per xy, and if, if you raise x to this one, you get the same. Then he concludes, okay, Alice must have sent b equal to zero. On the other hand, if, if this is false, meaning, okay, let me finish this logic first. If this is true, then B equal to zero. On the other hand, if this is false, meaning C2 is G power Z, so he has G power Z here, right? Z is some random number. Um, of course, Z is randomly chosen from ZQ. What is uh, C1 power X? C1 power X is, of course, G power XY. And there is no reason to believe that G power XY will be equal to G power Z, see, because Z is randomly chosen. Therefore, he will conclude that, well, this is certainly not equal. Therefore, he will conclude that B equal to one. So this is basically it. So using this very nice trick, whether the incoming uh, pair from Alice is of the form G power Y, G power XY, he can conclude if that is true, B equal to zero, otherwise B must be one. So let's think about from an attacker perspective, why can't the attacker figure out whether bit B equal to zero was sent or B equal to one was sent? So now let's think about what are the public things the attacker knows, right? Attacker knows H, H is public. That means G power X is known and G power Y is also known, right? Um, because it was sent in clear text from Alice to Bob. In the case of B equal to zero, Alice will be sending G power X, Y, okay? okay for B equal to zero. In the case of um, B being one, it will be G power X, G power Y, and G power some random number Z, right? That's what we wrote here. Remember, we discussed about the decisional Debye-Hellman problem. 
Uh, if we assume decisional Debye Hellman problem is hard, which is true in many of the cyclic groups that uh, we work with, um, then of prime order, um, then um, nobody can distinguish between this and this. Okay, so therefore uh, this this is the system is secure as long as decisional Debye Hellman problem is hard in the cyclic group that you are working with. Okay, that's all.